So let's start out with this. Uh, you know, this was a seat that you know has long been held by Kevin McCarthy, um, who I know is a mentor of yours, as long as Bill Thomas, as well as Bill Thomas, who is also another mentor of yours. How important uh, is their legacy in the factor of you running for this seat? Well, I've been very blessed over my career to have great mentors, both Bill and Kevin, and a, a number of people throughout throughout with schooling and, and through my life. Um, you know, so s certainly uh, I'm very lucky to call them all uh, uh, friends and mentors. You know, they've taught me a lot uh, as we as we t tackle a lot of challenges, both on this on this uh, in California and across the nation. Um, they've taught me a lot of lessons. We get, decisions are going to be made with or without you, and you got to be in the room when those decisions are made. And you know that's important as we embark on this new journey of of representing uh, our uh, our region, the Central Valley in Washington D.C. You know, we are a nation in crisis. You look at the issues right now, what's happening on the southern border. Uh, the affordability crisis, what's happening with inflation, everything is getting more expensive. Uh, you look at public safety, uh, you look at the, the, the need for more uh, energy production and food production, which we do in the Central Valley. Um, you know, all of those things are under attack when you look at what's happening in Washington. So we need to send someone who's experienced, tested, and trusted uh, to Washington, D.C. to be uh, a voice for the Central Valley. And I believe I'm that person. And I think the lessons I learned from Bill and Kevin will, will certainly serve me well. And you talk about experience. Uh, you know, you're, you're the state assemblyman running in this race. Nobody else has that uh, similar office. Can you talk about how that has prepared you and uh, in, in how it's maybe shaped you as a conservative running for this seat? Sure. Well, when I first decided to run for the assembly seven years ago, I mean, as I said before, I felt that Sacramento just was I had a bullseye over the Central Valley. When we talk about our inability to, to, to produce uh, oil and natural gas, our, the restricting water supply, and we talk about the inability to manage our forests properly and, and, and prevent catastrophic wildfires, um, you know, the challenges with, uh, with taxes and regulations and, and businesses closing or, or, or leaving California, um, you know, that was the reason why I ran for, uh, for state office. And you know, the challenge is, is that you know, we had to fight for what we believed in. Uh, you know, the, the, the large urban centers, I mean, they literally have a, 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 a lot of power in, in Sacramento. And so we needed to send someone to Sacramento that could that stand up to all of them, uh, to stand up to the Newsom administration. And I feel that same fight exists now. California is not the model uh, that the United States should follow. Now, you look at what's happening uh, across the country, all those lessons could have been, we could have avoided all those consequences uh, if we learned the, the, the lessons in California. So uh, I'm going to take that same drive and fight uh, that, that I took to Sacramento to Washington DC because again uh, we've got so many challenges so many crises uh, that's facing our country right now uh, and all of it is directly impacting everyday Californians especially the residents in the Central Valley uh, the 20th Congressional District. In conversation with uh, uh, former speaker Kevin McCarthy, former representative uh, McCarthy, he says there's a number of issues in the state you know pointing to particularly gas prices here, uh, other issues like crime that maybe are difficult to address in D.C. How do you address those issues in D.C. should you be elected? Well, when it comes to the gas prices and energy prices, um, you know, that's what's driving a lot of, of costs uh, when, it, when you talk to, to everyday Californians. Uh, we need more energy production. You know, when you look at the policies uh, under President Trump, we were energy independent. We were, we were approving permits. We were allowing uh, uh, all of those uh, explorations and, 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 and drilling to happen. And, and when you look at California, when you look at the Central Valley, we produce 70% of, of the state's oil and natural gas. We could be participating and helping our nation become energy independent. And it's because of the policies coming from the Biden administration, modeled after what Newsom is doing, that's restricting our supply. You look at our refining capacity that's gone down. Uh, we, we're gonna, we went from 20 re refineries uh, in the 1980s in California. Now we're going to be under 10. And we cannot have that model uh, when it comes to the, to the rest of the country. So uh, when that's, that's, that's one of the key solutions when it comes to gas prices. When it, when it comes to agriculture and water, uh, you know, President Trump approved new biological opinions that allowed more water to flow into the Central Valley to help our farmers, to help our ranchers, to help give drinking water uh, to, to the people in the Central Valley. And what did Sacramento do? It undid it and sued the federal government. We need someone in, in Washington that understands the nexus between Sacramento and Washington, D.C. to say, look, we need energy production. We need water supply. We need uh, fiscal sanity. Uh, and that's what I bring to the table. I guess the other question, too, would be how do you uh, distance yourself, I guess, from a couple other candidates in the race who want to run as kind of in that MAGA lane? And how do you pull in those voters that may be vital if it's uh, two Republicans going at it in November? Well, you know, I voted for President Trump twice. I, I've, I've endorsed him. 
Uh, certainly, there's fundamentally, if you look at uh, the last four years compared to the four years under Trump, we were better under President Trump. Um, you know, so there is really, when we talk about solving problems, we have to build a coalition bigger than we've ever built before. And I look forward to working with President Trump when, uh, when, if I'm elected to Congress. But, you know, we have tremendous challenges and we have to build a coalition. And, we, and I'm going to hit the ground running. There is no one that has the experience that can go into Congress that has relationships to, to, to bring people together to solve problems. You know, there's a lot of people that will hope and be ambitious enough to try to do it, but you've got to have the experience. I'm tested in this, in this uh, environment, and I'm trusted by the, by the people in the Central Valley. I know you have people that are looking at you running at two different seats at the same time as just how it has to be on the ballot. Are you planning to resign if you are elected to the House? Would you resign from the Assembly? Yes, I mean, my goal is, is to serve in Congress. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, you know, we had to litigate this matter uh, you know, when, when we had the decision to run um, under the open primary, under the elections code, uh, there's a five-day extension when the incumbent doesn't run. And it was to ensure that every single voter had a choice between anybody who wanted to run for office. The Secretary of State, unfortunately, was using an arcane 100-year law that doesn't apply in this situation and that was in, in conflict. And, um, and it went against the fundamental principle of our elections, which is the voters should have the right to choose the person they felt was the best representative for them. And we prevailed in court. Uh, and so uh, there's going to be other people that will, will jump into the assembly race. And I look forward to seeing who those people are. All right. Well, thank you, Vince Fong, for being here today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it.